Welcome to the Comedy Recycling Theory of the Entire Known Universe. This segment is going to be about polarized light and why we always seem to find polarized light in almost every direction we look and almost every place we see within the universe. The mainstream theory, the universe is supposed to be mostly electrically neutral, meaning that uh, there's virtually no widespread sources of ionizing activity within the universe, things that keep producing or maintain ionization within hydrogen atoms and other such things like that, that would make the universe electrically, uh, or uh, that, that would uh, increase electrical polarization within the universe. Whereas the comedy recycling theory says that virtually every star that's out there, or a good many of the stars that are out there, may be producing copious streams of excess electrons if they're all powered internally by a small black hole, which the comedy recycling theory does believe that's the case within our sun. Now the question is, how many other stars out there are also using a black hole to power them? And that's one thing, that's one of the areas I I don't have enough information on that right now, being the amateur that I am, uh, I don't have enough information on that to be able to judge are all the stars or most of the stars out there doing that, or is our sun more or less a special exception? And that's one of those things. I hope to have that data sometime within the near future to be able to find a good source where I can find this type of information and then I can release it to you, the home viewers and the home readers. But the comedy recycling theory hypothesis is that our sun and a good deal of other things like that that are black hole powered, the black hole will be consuming the protons and proton neutron combinations and freeing up excess electrons outside of it. Later on, many whether you know hundreds, thousands, millions, or billions of years later, when the process reverses and the black hole releases all these pent up protons, that that's what powers it, and that's why the supernova keep expanding at an expanding rate or at a very high rate, much faster than they would if they were strictly fusion powered or you know strictly powered by the heat of fusion, that the expansion rate for supernova should slow down considerably from what it does. Whereas there are many supernovas that are still expanding after tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of years, we still see some supernova remnants that are increasing the size and that they're, they're still going at a pretty good clip, far more so than should be the case if the expansion was powered simply by the original heat of the supernova, that that should have cooled off almost as soon as the expansion started, that the ejecta from the supernova should have, should have cooled off considerably and should have stopped expanding. But if it's a proton to proton repulsion driven expansion that the only way that expansion will stop or will slow down is when all the protons become neutralized and that won't happen until all of the protons and that means all the protons have to meet up with their long lost electrons which may have been swallowed thousands millions billions of years in you know, in earlier times, whatever, so the electrons have a pretty good head start in dispersing around. But the interesting thing about that is that if such a scenario is going on, that means there should be extreme electrical imbalances within this universe. And that's why the comedy recycling theory is not at all surprised that there's the level of polarized light measured that we actually see within this universe. That's something that conventional theory expects our universe is mostly electrically neutral and expects that almost any electrical charge out there should be neutralized within a very, very short distance. Whereas the comedy recycling theory that I know of is the only theory that has virtually a perpetual source of both positive ions in the from supernova, quasar cipher galaxies, gamma ray bursts, things on that order of magnitude, and of uh, excess electrons just coming from 
our sun, at least by the comedy recycling theory hypothesis, and that's one of the reasons that we see all the enormous magnetic fields, loops, whirls, magnetic activity with the sunspots on the sun's surface, and that's one of the reasons that we have a good causal or source mechanism for that type of electrical ionization. There was an article several years back in Scientific American that stated that something like the outer one-fifth of the hydrogen atoms within this universe are electrically ionized. In other words, they're, they're positive protons that are just out there free and loose and that conventional science has no real understanding of what the energy source is, why that would be the case, why there are so many ionized hydrogen atoms out there. They had thought that originally everything was ionized at the Big Bang and then it deionized, but then in their wonderful hypothesis they have to reionize everything to get it to appear like it is today. Whereas only the comedy recycling theory has a good way of explaining where do all these positively ionized hydrogen atoms come from that are found all over the universe, you know, especially closer to the outer edges that, that we know of. So anyway, that's, that's a brief summary or a brief listing of some of the differences between the comedy recycling theory ideas and conventional theory ideas. Whereas the comedy recycling theory hypothesis and ideas actually do seem to fit our universe as it is observed today and can live with, can explain, can understand the phenomenon that are seen out there, conventional theory has no real good knowledge of or appreciation of why is there so much polarized light in every direction? Why do we have these enormous electrical fields? Why do we have these enormous magnetic fields? Why are there such enormous current flows going on out there in outer space, which is supposed to be generally electrically neutral, that it's not supposed to have any of these sources of electrical activity out there caused by predominantly thermonuclear fusion within the sun. That's supposed to be mostly an electrically neutral activity, although there may be some friction from the heat generated at the center of the sun by the thermonuclear fusion, but it still should not be enough to produce the level of electrical activity, even that's seen within our own, our own uh, solar system between the million amps that have been found within the aurora, both at, uh, the aurora borealis and you know, at the south pole. I forget what the name of it is offhand, so I won't use it, but I think it's aurora australis, but I'm not, I'm not certain on that. I'll put it in footnotes and put it later on after I get a chance to look it up when I get home. But it's, uh, but anyway, and then we also have the 5 million amps that are found between Jupiter and Io, again within our solar system, and that's only some of the electrical activity. There's still uh, other planets that have had auroral rings found within those planets. I believe uh, Venus, I'm not sure about Mars, I believe uh, either Neptune or Saturn that may have been discovered as well. So that, so that a lot of the planets in our solar system have enormous electrical activity also and magnetic fields that can't be explained by conventional hypotheses. So that should give you something to think about. One more possible reason that you might want to pos or positively consider the comedy recycling theory. Again, you know, if you reject it, that's fine, but at least pay attention to some of the things it explains and, you know, give it a fair chance. See, can it actually explain some of the things going on within, within this universe better than conventional theory can? And I do believe that the comedy recycling theory can do that. So um, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for listening. Thank you for giving us your time. And you can check it out even more at www.cr-theory.org and read more about it.